Oh, hey, what's up? Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. So, if you watched one of the last drift videos, I broke this thing at the last event. Not intentionally, you know, sometimes stuff happens, and thankfully, it's not a bad issue. So, I caught it when I was in the middle of a session. I smelt some coolant. What I thought was coolant could have been something else. Uh, didn't see the temp gauge moving, didn't see anything weird, didn't see smoke, so I was like, all right, screw it, send it out, do another lap. Smelt it even more uh, halfway through that lap. So when I was sitting in line waiting to go again, because at that, you know, I was complaining the last video how long the sessions were taking to get back, you know, get a lap in, um, I realized, oh shoot, um, you know, I saw some wet stuff on the floor after I moved forward, and I was like, hmm, that looks a little too fresh to be the guy in front of me. So. Uh, yeah, it turns out I had a torn coolant line. Now, that was my bad. I decided to skip out. I bought the Rain Master Kit. Rain's one of the, you know, hose manufacturers for this. You can get on Sapiro. But bought the Master Kit. Ended up just changing what I could easily access at the time. And that has now come back to bite me in the butt. So I'm going to be fixing this in this video. We're going to be fixing what I broke. So it's an easy hose. I can actually do the hose on its own that's damaged without taking anything else apart. But there's other hoses that are right next to it that are, look to be in about the same condition. And I don't want to have to deal with those at the next event or the event after that or even just driving home after I fix this one. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to eat some breakfast here. We're just going to hang out for the day. You and me, we're going to have a nice day. And we're going to get some work done. It's been sold at the shop lately. Kind of a bummer for me because I'm losing money. And uh, even bigger bummer is my welder finally gave out on me yesterday. I don't know if it's the foot pedal that just died or if the welder is having issues. I've been meaning to get this thing serviced because um, it's an older unit but the issue is I can't afford to have the downtime with my TIG welder. This is my primary machine so thankfully one of my recent customers and friends was able to hook me up with this welder for very cheap. This is a Prime Weld 225XXT so um, if you guys are interested I'll make my own little review on this welder because I've never used one personally um, but I've heard great things about it. I have some friends that use it so we'll see but yeah I uh, had to get a new welder so it's just been a slower month, but because of that, I've had more time to kind of get caught up on small things here, you know, get the car taken care of, get the cage done. But nonetheless, you know, we're gonna make the best of it. And, you know, let's just, uh, let's get some work done. And uh, while I'm eating, I'm gonna charge you guys because you're looking a little dead. So go take a nap, we'll see you soon. All right, got some work done on another customer's car. So now I can get started on my stuff. So let me show you what we got that we are working with here. Basically, all this. All these little hoses. This is the one in particular that uh, is damaged, but yeah. So I'm gonna pull this stuff all out really quick, and yeah, I don't know. It's not the worst job, but there's definitely some tediousness to it, so let me just show you really quick. Um, so everything is stuffed under the intake manifold here, unfortunately. You can access some of it. The hose in question that is damaged is, uh, well, right there. So of the three, it's the one most on the left. And it attaches to the back of the cylinder head right over here. It's got a tear right at the clamp, so that's unfortunate. But yeah, I'm already missing quite a bit of stuff. There's a bunch of plastics, like cowl stuff that's supposed to go here. So, uh, you know, I've already got a head start because my car is missing it. So essentially, it's pretty simple. We just take this stuff off, uh, disconnect some of this stuff, you know, like the PCV line here. And then, you know, the hard part for me last time was these injector clips. I can't even really show you them because they're that stupid. It's the style where you gotta like pull the, the, the clip around the edge and then do the other one at the same time. But like when you do one, the other one likes to pop back into place. Extremely annoying, but doable. So I think the manifold's just about ready to come off. I got all the hardware off and I got the sensors and stuff that I could see. And it's only been, you know, probably 15 minutes. But I noticed, because I've only done this once before, but it was on a 95 model. This is a 96, which means, you know, emissions and a few things are going to be different. The one thing I'm noticing, though, is on the other fuel rail, there was a, uh, a, a connection point here. Like this is, I think there was a return right here. And then the feed was back there. And it was just some hoses. This one has both of them back there, which then tie in down here and go under the car. So I'm gonna try and just gently lift this off because the other issue, or the only other way to do it would be to pull the fuel rail, which doesn't seem too bad because I already have all the, obviously the injector harness disconnected. And also, by the way, these are the plugs I was talking about. These little pinch clip things. Yeah, these are the devil. Um, but I just, I'm so worried because I don't have any extra O-rings. And if these things, you know, decide to crap the bed on me, 
then the car is kind of stuck. But I'm gonna try and pull this off gently. I don't need it, I guess, fully out. That'd give me a lot of extra space. But if I can just move this out of the way, we'll be happy. There's a lot of little brackets under here, but it's out. So this is what we're working with. I do have a new intake manifold gasket. That's what I was waiting for. You can see mine's kind of looking like it's torn right here. Actually, that might just be how it sits. Oh, yeah, no. All right, well, it's not torn, but I got new ones to put on anyway. So that's good. I'm going to put some towels in here. And uh, I really hate this fuel line uh, setup right here. There's no no way to release this that's just fully crimped it looks like so you know part of the game you win some you lose some but uh these are the hoses that i'm taking care of right here so this is the one that's bad um under the clamp on the back side here has the tear when i take that off you can kind of see coolant dried up down there on the starter um and then i do have this guy and then these two little guys and then i think i have one more coolant line so yeah, that would be that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. And this one, I think this one goes to the throttle body because there's only one other coolant line that's down there that I didn't really touch, um, which looks to be this guy right here. Yeah, so it should be this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to clean stuff up. And uh, yeah, once I have a little bit of progress made, I'll you know catch up with you guys here in a minute, but my hands already get really dirty and I don't wanna ruin the camera. Went to Harbor Freight and got the fuel line tools we need because it turns out you can connect, disconnect these. It's the pinchy clip style. It's just, it's hard to see when it's all on there. So I don't know which size we need. I just got the, you know, variety pack here. And uh, I'm gonna take these off. That way the intake manifold's out of my way. And then I can go ahead and start changing the hoses. Not that the, you know, not that that's in the way of that, but there's other stuff I wanna check while I'm in here, so. All right, fuel lines are disconnected, thankfully. That tool works fantastic, to be honest. So shout out Harbor Freight. But if you guys have never seen the underside of an intake manifold on a BMW, let me tell you, it is not a pretty sight. I mean, this is just a lot of junk. Like we got the fuel lines here. Obviously we got this PCV thing here, which kind of ties in with this thing. There's a thing on the manifold that has the other piece. You got miscellaneous vacuum lines. This one's rock freaking solid. And then you got bunch of random connectors you got this other stuff like there's just so much junk in here a lot of this can be deleted too i just uh haven't got that far yet so yeah making it work bing, bada boom bada bing bada boom so i'm gonna go ahead and change these hoses out quick and uh yeah you know catch up with you guys here in a bit okay i got completely sidetracked me and chase were just digging through a bunch of this stuff so it looks like a bigger mess right now because this is just kind of like resting over here where it shouldn't be. So this vacuum line, I have no idea where it goes. It didn't go to anything before, like it wasn't hooked up. Um, where the heck does this go? Oh, this goes to the bottom of the manifold. But there was this weird thing, and believe it or not, if the forum is correct, so this looks like a charcoal canister, right? This wasn't even hooked up, um, at least to anything other than here. And that little section was going under the fuse box. So I looked it up and apparently, these cars, wow, my hair is really messed up, bear with me. Uh, apparently these cars on the 96 models, maybe diff different ones, but on the, the uh, maybe European, I don't know what it is, what the difference is, honestly. But long story short, basically that goes to a muffler flap. There's a check valve, which is apparently this, and I just obviously put vacuum caps on it, but that's a valve that basically is a, the factory muffler has a flap on it, and there's a vacuum line back there, I already checked, 
and that just kind of regulates on cold starts to make it quieter, which, you know, is counterintuitive. You know, I get a luxury car, it's supposed to be quite comfortable, but you know, we like noises around here, but I have an exhaust anyway, so it doesn't even matter. So I just capped those off. Again, I don't know what this one goes to, so I'm just gonna leave that open. If I have issues with it, I'll figure it out, but I can't find a solid diagram on it. So the rest of those things on this didn't really go anywhere. Cause yeah, this one went to the fuse box and these two didn't really go anywhere, but the way this thing is like all grimed up makes me think it went maybe atmospheric. I just, I don't, I don't even know. I'll have to look up a diagram. I mean, well, I'll really have to do some digging, but as far as I can understand, I called a few people. Sounds like it's not really used. So I'm just gonna leave it unhooked for now. Cause again, everything was just being vented. So if it had a job, it's not doing it anymore. But now I can finally get to pulling these hoses. I'm just getting the clamps loose on these guys right here. I'm gonna change this hose first and then all the clamps are off. So I'm just gonna start pulling them one by one. Try and make as little of a mess as I can. Okay, so I found the culprit. This is what was split at the last event. I don't know, camera's not picking that up too well, but this is the bad hose. Got the other hoses lined up here. So just making sure I know where they go. Uh, still gonna take this one off, but that's super easy. Let me show you guys really quick. Lots of space back here, you know, otherwise. But uh, yeah, go ahead and slap these things back together and uh, we'll keep on moving. Unfortunately, I uh, still can't find that diagram, but we'll keep looking. Okay, there we go. Fresh new hoses. Looking pretty decent. Got some of the harness tucked up. There's really no place for this stuff to go, but it's looking all right. Okay, it's finally back together after cutting my arms up pretty good. You can see how red and irritated it is, but we're looking pretty solid. Um, yeah, so all I gotta do is burp the cooling system just cause obviously with taking all that apart, we did let air in. Uh, it's a little bit different for you Honda followers on my channel on these things. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just kind of idle it, get it up to temp and then you just come over here and you just open this bleeder screw and just let it hiss out. And then you, you know, top it off as needed, rinse and repeat. So we start off because I did lose coolant at the track or, you know, water. I used distilled water, that's the wrong size. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and top this off now and then do it um, as it's idling. So you have to crack it just to let it, you know, breathe. And I use mostly just water. I use just a little bit of coolant because I've had enough cooling system issues because BMW stuff. <laughs> Um, and now this should hopefully be the last of it. So, but anyway, yeah, I use mostly water because you don't want to make a big old mess of glycol at the track. So we'll uh, let this burp out. You can kind of see it's already going down. So we'll just let it do its thing for a minute. Okay, so if everything went well, uh, we won't have any vacuum leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead, fire this thing up really quick and uh, burp it. Hopefully no check engine lights for whatever that valve is that I deleted, but if anything, that's going to be a vacuum. In. Oh, I forgot. Disconnected the battery because I didn't want to drop a bolt down by the, the starter because that would have been fun. Okay, there we go. Should be good now. Um, there we go. Yeah, make sure it's out of gear. Like I did before, so don't worry. I'm definitely gonna rebuild those injectors uh, or service those injectors and put the caps on them much sooner than later. So I didn't know it's been running this long without them. I know what it can do. So I don't have a drift event for a couple weeks yet. So I'm gonna order those and try and get this done ASAP. But in the meantime, let's just bleed this thing out. So I'll, you know, 
let you guys know when it's all done. Okay, so it wouldn't be a BMW video if something didn't go wrong. So I'm having issues bleeding this thing out and it's because the reservoir, the screw here is stripped out already. So if you don't know, those reservoirs are just plastic. And so the thermostat's having trouble kicking in uh, because it's just sucking in air. Like it's just not getting to the right temp. And then I don't know if, um, like I don't even know if it turned. Oh, okay, so the thermostat did open. Um, but yeah, it's just sucking in air. So I'm having a hard time burping it because it's just drawing in air. So if I tighten that good and snug, you know, because it doesn't get like snug because it just spins. But if I go down further, no air bubbles come out of here, but then it just starts weeping over. And so like, I'm pissed. So at least I have a lifetime warranty, you know, thanks to FCP. I just got to go through, do that thing. But um, yeah, the heater, I'm, I'm confused on which direction the heater valve is supposed to go because I have to take the thing out, pull the cable. And I'm pretty sure uh, most inboard would be heat, um, but I'm not getting much heat. It's a little, it's warm, but it's not hot by any means. So I don't know if that's because something's wrong or if it's because it's drawing in air, but I don't have time to figure this out. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do this another day, but uh, I'm just gonna wrap the video up here because I gotta go get out of here. Got a, a dinner to go to with some buddies and I just, I'm, I'm tired of messing with the car. So yeah, reservoir, gonna get that ordered tonight. And then I'll see if I can order the injector um, caps and get these things serviced ASAP. But anyways guys, thanks for spending some time out of your day here with me. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you wanna stick around, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment, you know, drop a like, help the algorithm. You know, it's hard to grow a YouTube, automotive YouTube channel and I, I'd appreciate you guys' help. So do just a lot, pick up the rest. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.